Sometimes we find something in a video game that makes you think, uh, no, we're, we're done here. In the spirit of Halloween, today we're diving into the top eight creepiest, most hauntingly bizarre discoveries ever found in a video game. Brought to you by Dashlane. The Witcher 3. Thanks to my friend Jamis on my Discord server for sparking off this still unraveling mystery in The Witcher 3, which began when she was playing the quest Tower of Mice and suddenly she heard this creepy disembodied voice. Uh. Uh. After searching the tower for some time without finding any clues, Jamis and I just chalked it up as being nothing more than a strange one-off occurrence. However, only a month later, the mystery opened up even further, when another member on my Discord server, Lucid Avidity, posted that if they stood in this exact spot in the same tower, this mysterious figure could be seen for a split second in the distance. Now this is where things get really weird. I asked my good friend Robert to investigate this one with me, and to both of our surprise, Robert was indeed able to recreate the ominous figure in the distance, which would instantly disappear the moment he tried to move closer. With some quick thinking in The Witcher 3's NVIDIA Ansel support, Robert was able to increase the sharpness and get a better look using Ansel's photo mode, but still couldn't get a really clear picture. That's when Robert had the brilliant idea to place Geralt near the figure's position with a torch, and then use the depth of field to pull the camera back to trigger the figure, and then zoom in for a closer look. To our absolute surprise, we found a fully modeled and possibly tall, very bizarrely textured female figure. I mean, just look at this thing's face. I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. Robert even managed to get a good look behind the strange creature and damn. I mean, yeah, it's really weird it'd be modeled like that. Everyone we've asked from here has been completely clueless about the monstrosity. Who or what is this thing supposed to be and what purpose does it serve to The Witcher 3? At this point, we can only assume there's more to uncover in Tower of Mice for the curious player willing to explore. Good luck to whoever dares, cause uh, me and Robert were low-key shitting ourselves the whole time we were looking into this. Steam. Earlier this year, Unique User posted on Reddit he walked away from Steam for a moment and when he came back, he could hear these hair-raisingly nightmarish sounds emitting from the application. Somehow the Steam music player had opened, which who even knew it had one, and it was playing only these five random sound effects he never saw before. In response on Reddit, it turned out a number of other Steamers had came forward saying they too had experienced trains audio admitting randomly from Steam, such as this YouTuber who opened up Steam and found himself getting a history lesson as he was played a long speech by Franklin D. Roosevelt. Observant Redditors were able to determine that the audio were sound effects from Amnesia the Dark Ascent. Despite the fact that most of those who experienced the issue never even had Amnesia installed, no one knows what exactly is triggering the Amnesia sound effects, if it's just a bug or user error. But if this is some sort of trick by Valve to drive us crazy, haven't you done enough with Half-Life 3? Army Men, Sarge's Heroes. From near the very inception of my Discord server, user Sizable Door made mention of a disturbing image in Army Men Sarge's Heroes he found as a child that's been bugging him for nearly 20 years. Unfortunately, nobody on the server was ever able to find it for him, until finally a couple months ago, Sizable was able to finally find the unshakable image himself. How he managed to find this thing in the first place when he was only four years old, I'll never know. But when he finally found the exact spot he crawled under as a child on the Scorch mission, Oh god. Ew. I can't stand to look at this any longer. Let's move on. NBA Jam. NBA Jam is a bit of a gold mine when it comes to odd discoveries, having been featured on the channel before for its odd battle tank mode, as well as having a ton of leftover content in its data that was rejected by the NBA themselves. He's up. Even more of which surfaced in the leaked XXX internal development version of the game obtained and dumped by Nintendo player in 2016. And no, I'm not making that up. No way. However, NBA Jam's most startling discovery is one that actually made it into the game. With players reporting shortly after release, the game would start shouting the name Petrovic over and over at random. And Petrovic was actually an NBA player that had died in a car accident that same year. 
Expectedly, this was largely passed off as a hoax, until an interview with developer Mark Termal with ESPN confirmed that the creepy occurrence was real. One night we were playing Mortal Kombat and there was a jam machine next to it and all of a sudden the game started calling out Petrovic, Petrovic. And this only happened after Petrovic had died. Everyone started freaking out. Something weird was going on with the software. And to this day, if you have an original NBA jam machine, every once in a while it would just yell out Petrovic. While it goes without saying this was just a bug, why the air singled out Petrovic over any other player and was only noticed after Petrovic's real life death makes it freakishly coincidental, making it perhaps the most convincing example of a haunted arcade cabinet to ever exist. And for those of you that are saying what about the legendary Polybius that notoriously killed players in the arcade, that's not real. Get that out of here! Carnival. Midway's most successful arcade game, though many would guess is Mortal Kombat, was actually the standalone graphic light shooter 1998's Carnival. Released on Halloween of that year, players had to shoot through a haunted carnival, shooting down surreal and creepy enemies such as conjoined twins, a literal spider monkey, and a baby. A move the developers were so sure would court controversy, they included a switch on the arcade cabinet so arcade owners could swap the baby on the fly with a teddy bear if anybody complained. Strangely, no one cared. The most disturbing image in all of Carnival actually comes in the form of an image mysteriously repeated over and over in the game data in lots of different sizes, which happens to be this deeply unsettling image of notorious serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer holding a bloody bag with Midway Game CEO Neil Nicastro's head. Hopefully this was just an inside joke amongst the team that Nicastro was aware of. But considering someone painstakingly exported the same image over and over in the game in lots of different sizes, I'd be constantly looking over my shoulder if I was Nicastro. Middle Earth, Shadow of War. In March of this year, IGN's walkthrough editor Brendan Graber decided to replay Middle Earth Shadow of War after beating it a couple years ago for his walkthrough of the game. In Shadow of War, the player befriends an orc named Bruce, who you can probably tell just from looking at him is not going to be your friend for very long. Right lord, that lord. Same thing really. Once the tables turn, Brendan repeatedly shamed Bruce over and over, a mechanic that levels down your opponent as well as wear the enemy's psychological stability over time. Over time, Bruce retaliated as a relentlessly unstable, overpowered level 40 machine. But Brennan decided if he was going to stream the game for his friends, he should start a new save and completely wipe the game file along with Bruce in it. Just as Brennan was completing the initial training of his new game, Brennan's heart dropped as he was suddenly thrown into an encounter well before he was equipped or ready for a battle when suddenly he saw the same exact level 40 Bruce from Brennan's now deleted save game, somehow appearing now in his entirely new game, appearing hours before he was even supposed to appear in the story, this time in a strange glitch state where Bruce could only let out creepy growls instead of having a normal speaking voice. Bruce somehow defied deletion, and in a seemingly hellbent act of unbridled vengeance, was now after Brendan in a completely new game file. Eventually, Brendan escaped Bruce. Checking his map to find Bruce was now somewhere out of bounds, meaning he was beginning to learn how to become smarter than the game itself. Eventually, Brendan came to the point in the game where Bruce actually appears in the story, and much to his relief, the actual Bruce appeared and not the AI monstrosity reaping terror across the outer reaches of Middle Earth. After recruiting Bruce to his team, all seemed back to normal again, until Brendan took a look at the remaining orc army and saw the shadowy level 40 monstrosity still standing there, meaning the fellow was still hiding somewhere on the map waiting to strike Brennan when he was least expecting. Needless to say, it's been a long time since Brendan's touched the same save file since. Cam Drone During PAX 2013, Hidden in a corner of the Indie Mega booth, journalists and convention goers noticed a random CRT monitor covered in blood that would occasionally display some truly disturbing imagery. The booth's attendee, Rami Ismail, told journalists that he had no idea who set it up, that he was only being paid to keep an eye on all the booths in the Indie Mega booth. Website 4 Player Network did some sleuthing and found a domain camdrone.com registered by Edmund McMillan, one of the creators of the notoriously difficult indie hit Super Meat Boy. Ed 
Pokemon denied working on the game stating we aren't involved in making Cam Drone. We know the dev who is making it and have been helping. We don't know that much about the project other than the boost setup. Shortly after, someone claiming they were Cam Drone's creator sent Eurogamer a message with a code that's still been unsolved to this day. Only a few months ago, Edmund was tweeted what he knew about the game and said, Cam Drone was boxed up and placed inside a wall years ago. It was recently rediscovered the film had been damaged by time. No idea what will come of it. Whatever the hell that meant and what Cam Drone actually is supposed to be is still a mystery. Final Fantasy XIV Thanks to Spooky Scary Radiance for submitting this mystery to me on my Discord server. 2013's Final Fantasy XIV is the second massively multiplayer installment in the series. An unwaveringly well-received online experience still going strong with its recently released Shadowbringers expansion. Well, that's what Square Enix wants you to think, as 2013's Final Fantasy XIV is actually a complete do-over of 2011's Final Fantasy XIV. A release that was such a notorious mess that Square shut the whole thing down and created a whole nother game to forget about the embarrassing mishap. And while that's definitely proven to have been the right decision, a number of mysteries were left unresolved on the game's original server that's left players such as Speaker's Network continuing to poke around in the original game. One such mystery was a hidden cave in Anorcia, hidden in a random spot in the mountains of Curthis. In the original game, a non-player character could be found blocking the entrance saying, I've been given specific orders to prohibit all access to the Fez using all necessary force. If you value your life, Unbeliever, I suggest you withdraw at once. Kind of extreme, but especially disturbing when you consider that Fez is actually the French word for ass cheeks. With the use of third-party software and a private server of the original game, Speakers was able to perform a colonoscopy and entered the Fez which appeared to be nothing more than an endless cavern that descended further and further underground. The cavern twisted and turned with many branching paths in clearly unfinished areas, meaning it wasn't long before speakers became completely lost. Speakers decided to take a pause when a chill was sent down his spine as he heard a second set of footsteps gradually nearing him from behind. Which rightfully prompted speakers to get the f out of there. Frantically continuing further through the cavern, the footsteps continued to get faster and faster until speakers finally found a door unlike any other, hoping it was finally an escape out, until he reached the unfinished end of the abyss. Fortunately, no creature or anything of the sort ever came to grab him. But when Speakers played the footage back later on, he noticed something odd that he didn't see before. Slowing the footage down, we can see when Speakers spun the camera back into the Fez, a mysterious odd head can be seen floating around in the distance, before vanishing never to be seen again. While the odd head was most likely the source of the mysterious footsteps, what triggered the head is still a mystery, as when Speakers went through a second time he couldn't get it to trigger again. If anyone's willing to solve this mystery any further, you never know what will turn up next in these ass cheeks. Just as many of these developers never wanted any of these discoveries to be found, you may be just as concerned of your own sensitive materials being discovered and leaked out into the world. Don't forget that Gears of War 3 leaked in 2010 because a couple of teens hacked in Epic Games servers, using the opportunity to make fun of the fact that game director Cliffy B had folders and folders of Katy Perry and Miley Cyrus music on his computer, which may be why you'll want to save yourself from the same embarrassment with the extra level of security that Dashlane provides. Dashlane can be your one-stop shop for your digital identity by managing all your passwords so that you don't have to keep track of each one. Dashlane works across all devices, including Apple products, PCs, Android, Safari, and Chrome. Dashlane also has a secure autofill feature that works for personal information and credit cards, saving you time when shopping online. A VPN to prevent prying eyes from tracking and helping you access content anywhere. Plus dark web monitoring to see if your information is being bought and sold illegally. To give it a try for free, go to dashlane.com slash oddheader and use my promo code oddheader to get 10% off if you want to upgrade to premium. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please subscribe. If you know of any other haunting discoveries, leave a comment down below, submit to oddheader.com, join the Discord, or even send me a shout on Twitter or Reddit, and keep an eye out for my video album Observer, featuring 40 minutes of new music composed by yours truly. Shout out to Alexander Knight, Bob, Daniel Lopez, Dead Plastic, Designer12, Down with System D, EC2 User, I Fart in Elevators, Igor.hxc, Nick, 
Rage Spot, Riley S, Select, Spencer I Rule at Games Geller, Towerizer, Van Yell, and Wade Murdoch for their Patreon support. Stay tuned.